Hi guys, welcome to Summer Insure Farms. My name is Fred and today we are bringing you an episode from our series of how to start a cattle farm in Ghana. But before that, I want to take a minute and say happy end Ramadan to all our Muslim brothers and sisters out there. Today, our episode is going to be about breed, cost and market. As you start your cattle farm, I think these are some of import, some important questions that you'll be thinking of. Today we are going to go in a different style, where Angela, who is mostly behind the camera, is going to come in as a host. Stay tuned as we bring you the episode. As Fred said, today I'm the host for this video. So today, in our series How to Start a Cattle Farm in Ghana, we are tackling the subject of breeds, costs and market. Hello Fred, how are you today? Doing well Angela, thanks for asking. How are you too? Oh, I'm fine, I'm very good. So welcome to our little show this morning. We have some questions for you, as I told you already before. So let's start with our first question, yeah? Sure. Our first question is, do we have breeds in cows as we do with other animals, for example, dogs? Yeah, thanks, thanks for your first question. Um, that's a good question. Yes, we do. Um, you know, if you go to the category of dogs, we have breeds like Rottweiler, German Shepherd, and the local Ghanaian breeds, as you've seen, they all look the same. But in cattle, we do have different kinds of breed, uh, just like other animals as well. Okay, but so about these different breeds, what would you say that we can specifically find in Ghana as a cow breed? Okay, so when it comes to breeds in cattle, um, you know, you go to the U.S. in the Western world, we have breeds like the New Jersey, the Brahman, and so on and so forth. When you come to Ghana, uh, most of our cattle here are from either Mali, Burkina, Nigeria, and mostly it's, it has been crossbreeded. And when it's crossbreeded in a certain district, then the district or the village or the town tends to give it its own name. So we have breeds like the Budeji, the Chihuahua, and so on and so forth. But these breeds, I, I would say, are not standardized across the whole country. They are specific to the regions or the towns or to a certain group of people. But what I've seen in Ghana that is standardized is what we call the Gudali breed. So the Gudali breed is also known as the short horns. And in the U.S., I think it is a little bit genetically twisted and it's called Brahman. But that is the only breed I found in Ghana that is standardized in the international market. But aside that, most of the breeds here that we have here are crossbreed and named locally. And I might tell you a couple, but they might be different according to which area in Ghana that you are. And it's mostly the ones with horns, mm. right? Yeah. So supposing that, for example, I want to start a cattle farm. How would you suggest for me to choose which breed is more appropriate for me? Mm. Um, so, two, two things. So the cost, I mean, all the breeds come with at a specific cost. So, you know, depending on how much you can afford is one. And then two, what are you using it for, right? So I know most people are breeding for, for beef. And if you're breeding for beef, and again, source to, 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 to food as well. For example, we are dealing in Gudali, and Gudalis eat a lot. If you're a cattle farmer, you can agree with me that Gudalis never get full. So they can eat and eat because of their extra skin. You wouldn't even see their stomach being full, right? Um, so, but they get big. I think they, they are one of the biggest cows you can find in Ghana if you feed them well. So 
it depends on, 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 on the farmer. You know, if you have access to a lot of food or land to, to feed them, I would definitely advise you to go for a gudali because they can get big. And they are really very peaceful and beautiful animals as you've seen in our in some of our videos and at the farm. Right. So um, that is my recommendation. But other people have the budeji, the chiwalis, and I personally don't like them because of the horns. Oh, okay. um, you know, they, it could be very dangerous in the farm, but they are very cheap. Hmm. So in terms of cost, you know, if you want to start, that's where you, you can also start from. So let's say that it depends also a little bit from our own resources, right? Yes, definitely. All right. Okay, so from what you said, let's say that now I decided and I want to buy a Gudali. Mm -hmm. Where can I source my Gudali from in Ghana? Okay, so sadly, um, we don't have a, a market for specific breeds in Ghana. Okay. But what we do have are local markets, which is probably located in every district or region. You know, some regions have two, and this is where you go and you source normally your your, your cows or, or bulls, if, if, if you want to call it. Um, and some some of the examples are the Bupe market, the Yeji market, the Ejira market, um, the Wanchi market, cow market. And if you go there, most farmers will travel from the bush and bring their cows and bulls to sell. So if you go there, knowing the breed you want, you'll be able to choose which kind of breed that you want from there. Sometimes you might not actually find the breed, maybe as Gudali. Um, I remember going to Wanchi and I didn't even see even a single Gudali there. Mm -hmm. So I had to move on to a different market. Another way is also tracing the farmer to each farm, which is something that I would recommend a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's say that the research anyway can be also long and take time. Yeah, definitely. But we suggest as always not to get discouraged, right? And to keep on Looking. going. Yeah. yeah. But about the markets, is it actually safe according to you and to your experience to buy our cows there in terms of their health? Mm. Um, I, it's, it's, it's a dicey thing, you know, um, when it comes to safety, um, of the cows in the market honestly speaking and I hope farmers will will pardon me on this but I want to be as honest as I can from my experience when I brought my my cows first I had a lot of problems because as we all know we don't have enough cattle in Ghana to feed the whole country or to to, to meet the demand therefore people bring their cows to market upon two reasons whether they need money or the cow is not feeling well right so it is very sad to say but most of the cows that you will go and buy from the market into your ranch you will need to treat them a lot because you know the farmers are in the forest and basically they are not treating the cows with anything so when one is not feeling very well or is not having some kind of disease they tend to get rid of it and because cows are expensive they get rid of it by selling it so I want to give you this caution. If you're going to go to the market and buy your, your, your breeds from there, please make sure you go along with somebody who knows about cattle and will be able to buy you the best. That doesn't mean that every cattle or cow in the market is not good. Hmm. But please take caution because I've been a victim of this and um, and that is the advice I would give to your people. Oh, I think it's uh, the best advice. I mean, for sure, if I would go, I wouldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's move a little bit on the topic of costs. Mm. So, do we have any specific cost about, let's say, a kind of breed mm. here in Ghana mm. or generally? Yeah. So, it's unfortunate there is no standardized price for for the price of a of a cow or a bull and that is something in future we hope uh, the government will be able to 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 do it as a favor for the farmers because if you go to the western world um i know some of you are watching me from the us from germany it's sold by pounds or kilos you know so you weigh your cow and you know that this cow weighs 100 pounds or thousand pounds and therefore a pound of, of, of cow is this amount so you multiply it uh, but in Ghana unfortunately even if we do have it I haven't come across it though but we are not using it in the market 
so there's not a specific price for um, the cow mm -hmm. but in terms of price range when you go to the market it depends upon either you're buying it as a calf or as a matured heifer um, mm -hmm. you know that can be cross um, so if you're buying a breed like what we have the Gudalis um, a calf is ranging from somewhere from thousand five to two thousand right and if you're buying a heifer which is a breed um, at a stage where it can be crossed maybe one two year old then you're looking at somewhere around three thousand if you go into the local ones um, which are the Udeji and Chiwalis you're looking at a less cheaper cost so a calf of a Chiwali might be sold probably at even 900 or at most a thousand fewer cows will be sold at a thousand but if you're talking about a heifer then you're looking at maybe a thousand five um for for a heifer okay fred now you have talked to us about um the breeds where we can find them and also a little bit about the price range but i want to know more about your cattle farm so where did you get your cows and tell us a little bit about your own experience okay. um, so just like I said everybody when when I was starting I actually went to some of the market I knew differently that I wanted a Gudali breed and for so many reasons that I've talked to you about and I went first to the uh, Wenchi market and couldn't find a single Gudali breed I went all the way to Ejra. Um, I think I got about one breed of, of cow. And then I went to Yeji. And then went to Bupe. And bought about, I think the maximum I got was about seven or eight. But when I came back and, you know, started observing them, I realized uh, all of them basically had problems that I needed to deal with. Mm -hmm. So from there, I decided I'm not gonna go to the market again, but I'm gonna look for a farmer that mm. actually breeds um, Gudali. And it wasn't an easy research. So I finally find a Nigerian man who actually migrates his um, cows from Nigeria to Ghana oh. um, at certain point in the year. So I was able to make contact with him and go deep inside the forest and meet with him. And that's where I was able to source about 30 cows at once from him and bring it to my farm <laughs> the advantage about sourcing it from a farm is you know the owner is not selling because they are sick you can see your, the cows you can pick the ones you want negotiate with him and then buy it from him so preferably that is the best way of buying it if you know the source and where to get hmm. so for example today if I'm thinking to buy one. Could I refer myself to you mm. to get some help in getting Gudalis? I mean, why not? Um, it's just not, as I said, you, you know, the, the farmers are always in the forest. So it's not a concrete thing that I can always promise and say, I'm going to go, I will find him today. You know, mm -hmm. I will have to call him mostly on Fridays when he comes to the town to pray and then see if I can get in touch with him, arrange with him mm -hmm. before I visit. Mm -hmm. So why not? I'm willing to help others who are looking for the same breed, mm -hmm. but it's just not a promising thing. It, it, it takes a lot of time and trust, you know, before I can, I can assist the person. Um, and in our breed, in our farm, we're actually still breeding. So I know most people have been contacting us, mm -hmm. wanting to buy some of our calves. Um, Gudalis are very hard to find in Ghana and that's why we've taken it upon ourselves to breed the pure breeds so that in future we'll be able to sell to people like you who are watching me who are in need of some um, but at the moment if you need some we'll be able to support you and guide you on how to get it but at our farm we are not selling at this point that I'm talking <laughs> maybe in the next year or two we will be able to share and spread our breed as well very good but um, another question I have, uh, let's say on the point where I'm starting and after I got all the information I need about breed, costs and markets, so where to find them and so on. Uh, what is the ratio of bull and cows I should start with or you suggest to start with? Mm. Okay, so in terms of the ratio of bull to a cow, 
Um, first of all, depend on the age of the bull. Just note that. But from my experience, I would advise anybody who is entering the um, cattle business is to focus on getting the females first. The bull is very important to your livestock and how your 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 heads are gonna grow. So focus, get your females, and take your time. Get a very matured, nice looking bull, cause the calves are gonna be dependent on the bull, mm -hmm. right? So don't rush in and buy a bull, and then the next day you see somebody's bull, and you're like, I want that bull. Then you are gonna have two bulls, which is gonna be problem, mm -hmm. right? But on on a nutshell, the ratio. If you have a bull that is fully mature, that is about three years and above, you can have 20 cows to the bull. If you don't have the money to afford 20 cows and you can afford five cows, it's still five cows to a bull. So by the maximum, you wanna have 20 cows to one bull. And please, and please, I, ha I bought about five bulls before I got the bull that I actually wanted to cross my breed, hmm. right? And I don't want you to repeat the same mistake. Focus on your cows, and then once you find a bull that you like and want the cows to be like, then you purchase the bull. Okay, very good. But uh, always on the starting point, do you suggest to buy calves or heifers to start with? Mm. Yeah, so that's a very good question, Angela. Um, if you're starting a cattle farm, most people like to start with calves. Uh, there is positive and negative aspect of it on both sides, whether you start with high first. So high first are um, calves that have matured um, and are no more with their moms, you know, mostly in one new state. But um, how, if you start with calves, the good aspect is that you, especially if you're thinking about intensive as we advocate in every day, then you, you have them as calf to be able to train them to get to know you and to be able to get used to your feeding, to be able to get used to your confinement, the environment, the ranch, and so on. But if you get a heifer, they already are coming with some behavior, you know, whether they were tortured, whether they were beaten, whether they were walking, randomly grazing, then that is gonna give you a whole hell of problems if you go straight away into intensive farming, as we talked about in our previous video, right? Um, so th these are the, the positive and negative side of getting a calf. What is my recommendation? Um, on the business side, I will recommend getting a matured calf. One, why do I say this? Because the price is different, it's not that big. So if I'm buying a Gudeli calf from let's say 1,005, 1,008 um, Ghana cities and I'm buying a matured one for 3,000, right? The matured cow that you buy, which is two years and older, is probably or definitely pregnant. Mm, so ready to give you calves. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So in less than probably a year, you're going to be having a calf, mm -hmm. you know, which is going to be doubled your money. So on a business sense, that is what I think. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when I started my stock, about 30 of the cows that I bought were already pregnant. So in that first year, I had about, I don't know, maybe 15 cows, you know, mm. and that all of them were not crossed on my ranch, right? So that, oh. that was already like a profit for me. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the advantage and why I would recommend if you have the resources, you can blend them, mm. but mostly as a cow, buy a grown cow, you know, okay. because they mostly will come pregnant and um or even if they weren't pregnant you can cross them within a few months in your ranch and then see the profit you know and i think it's very encouraging when you start having calves at your ranch instead of you know rolling them for a year and a half you know and not seeing any addition to your head so that's my recommendation okay and fred this is our last question mm. Starting from this recommendation, do you have had a recommendation generally about the cattle farming business that you want to give to the farmers that are listening to us? Mm. Um, I think if you're listening to me, um, I know we've gotten a lot of feedback and, and, and encouragement from, from our brothers in all over the world, in, yeah. in the US, in Germany, and in some African countries, and in Ghana as well. And 
I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business that has not been exploded at all. Um, listening to one of the speeches from our president, um, I think he stated, if I'm not wrong, about 80% of the meat that we consume from Ghana are actually imported, right? And the cattle business have been left to our old grandfathers and who are not really running it as a business and, and, and using the modern knowledge and technology that this age we have access to in expanding and growing it. So I want to urge you, I mean, as little as you have, as little land that you have, you know, try it out. I mean, it is really, really, really a recreative business and the demand there is huge. So um, we are here at Samantia Farm to always assist you and give you the information and, ex and lessons from our experience. So I think it's a business that hasn't explored to its full potential. And therefore, I encourage um, everybody watching me or thinking about it to go into it. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it's definitely worth your time and energy. Very good. Thank you very much, Fred, for today's interview. Thank you, Angela. And um, I'm very happy to have you um, on the screen today. <laughs> uh, mostly, Angela is behind the cameras, uh, but today he gets to join me and I, I can imagine how much you're learning about cows and by Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. That since we started to get a little bit this cooperation where I'm mostly behind the camera, I've learned a new a whole new world. Okay. So yeah, I I'm really happy about what we are doing and I hope also for you the things that we are doing are being educative enough to help you actually starting this kind of business or project let's say yeah. all right guys thank you once again for your time and your patience and i hope we were as educative and not too boring for you yeah. uh, we always try to be very realistic and tell you what is on the ground um, so thank you and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet please subscribe we bring you videos on every tuesday and every saturday saturday we are doing a series of, on how to start a cattle farm and we are in episode three. three. Yeah. And on Tuesdays, we bring you videos on everything that is happening on the farm. Yeah. So subscribe and keep 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 in touch with us. Um, we love seeing your comments. Um, we have our WhatsApp number also in the info. Um, I want to give a few shout outs to you know to Majid in Germany. Um, yeah. A few people in in the US have been reaching out, wanting to invest into this business. We invite all of you to come down and um, let's let's feed the nation together. Yes, let's do it.